In today's biased news, Meatball Ron drops out, Modi continues to push for a Hindu nation, and a major victory against malaria. Far-right Florida Governor Ron DeSantis has ended his presidential campaign and endorsed Donald Trump just two days before the New Hampshire primary. This move comes after disappointing performance in Iowa and a significant decline in support. The endorsement leaves former UN Ambassador Nikki Haley as Trump's last challenger for the Republican nomination. DeSantis criticized Haley, calling her a representative of the old Republican Guard, and endorsed Trump, stating that they can't go back to the so-called corporatism Haley represents. Trump, who previously ridiculed DeSantis, praised the governor at a New Hampshire rally and accused Haley of forming an unholy alliance with liberals and never-Trumpers. Trump holds a double-digit lead over Haley in polls for New Hampshire and South Carolina, where a loss for Haley could likely end her campaign. DeSantis' exit is expected to benefit Trump, with most of his supporters likely to shift their allegiance to the former president. Despite early promise, the DeSantis campaign faced challenges, including difficulty connecting with voters, general lack of charisma, and Trump's stronghold on the party's base. When it comes to the New Hampshire Republican primaries, Trump's dominance is being tested in a state with a more moderate electorate. These results will play a crucial role in determining the allocation of the state's 22 RNC delegates. Indian Prime Minister Modi is poised to inaugurate the Ram Temple in Ayodhya on January 22nd, marking a significant moment for the ruling BJP and reinforcing its openly stated Hindu nationalist ideology. Devotees believe the Grand Temple stands on the birthplace of Lord Ram, a sacred Hindu deity worshipped by millions. Opposition parties have opted to boycott the event. The Temple Trust organizers have extended invitations to around 8,000 guests, including influential industrialists, cricket stars, and Bollywood icons, reflecting the event's broad societal impact. To complicate matters, the temple was built on the site where a mosque stood for centuries before being demolished in 1992 by Hindu extremists. This act, aimed at shifting India's secular foundations towards a more visibly Hindu identity, triggered deadly religious riots, claiming about 2,000 lives. In 2019, India's Supreme Court awarded the contested site to the Hindus, paving the way for the construction of the Ram Temple. The opening of the temple fulfills a key campaign promise of the Prime Minister and his nationalist party. Muslim residents in Ayodhya express concerns that the temple's inauguration may evoke painful memories of the past violence. One commenter from the Center for Policy Research suggests that the consecration of the Ram Temple signifies the culmination of a decade-long campaign to, quote, reclaim a disputed religious site as Hindu ground, and marks the official endorsement by the state of the project to build a Hindu nation. Netanyahu has rejected a proposal from Hamas aimed at ending the ongoing conflict and securing the release of captives. He maintains his stance against an independent Palestinian state and insists on, quote, full Israeli security control over the region west of the Jordan River. In other words, total occupation. Netanyahu is facing increasing pressure on multiple fronts, with families of captives urging a deal for their return, coalition members pushing for a more aggressive approach in the genocide, and strained relations with the Biden administration. The situation is compounded by internal dissent within the war cabinet with some members questioning the feasibility of a total defeat of the resistance and suggesting the possibility of holding elections to gauge public confidence in the government. The ongoing protests highlight Israel's political landscape and general instability. In today's lightning round, Sony Group has called off the merger between its India unit and Z Entertainment in Mumbai, ending a two-year acquisition saga. The proposed merger aimed to create a $10 billion media entity in India, competing with local and global streaming platforms. In 2023, Russia became China's largest oil supplier, surpassing Saudi Arabia. China imported a record amount of Russian oil, taking advantage of favorable prices amid Western sanctions on Russia. The volume of Russian crude shipped to China increased by 24% to 107 million metric tons. Chile is poised to become the first country to ratify the global agreement to protect a third of the world's oceans, signed by 84 nations last September. Chile's decision to ratify puts pressure on other nations to fulfill their commitments. Greenpeace's Dr. Laura Meller expressed hope that Chile's swift ratification would inspire more countries to follow suit, allowing the actual efforts to protect the oceans to commence. And in positive news for the day, the greatest killer of humans in the history of our species was dealt a major blow on Monday when Cameroon launched the world's first routine malaria vaccine program. The program will also be implemented in 19 other countries this year. Approved by the World Health Organization, the RTSS vaccine is the result of 40 years of hard work and recent successful trials in Ghana and Kenya. Current statistics for malaria mortality on the continent are grim. Nearly half a million children under the age of five succumb to the disease every year. 
However, this vaccine is expected to save tens of thousands of lives during the first rollout, and will be implemented alongside existing anti-malaria methods such as bed nets to combat mosquitoes, malaria's main carrier. I think we can all endorse the sentiment expressed by the African CDC. Quote, For a long time, we have been waiting for a day like this. That's all for today. We'll be back on Wednesday with more news. Be sure to check out our analysis episodes, which release every other Friday. If you appreciate the work we're doing, consider becoming a patron to support the show. All patrons get early access to analysis episodes, as well as an audio version of the news. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.